1523 is a five bar knee with a pneumatic cylinder included. Now, what that means to you is this is K3 and above, okay, because we have a frictioning device, a resistance device, so that the knee has some resistance to coming into full extension and to bending the knee. Both of those adjustments are done simply on the cylinders. Two adjustments right here for flexion and extension. Um, this knee is everything about this knee is, has to do with geometry. So when you have the knee set up, basic, basic line would be mid socket, top proximal anterior uh, axis through about the center of the foot is where you want your weight line to apply. As this knee is tilted forward, it's making it less stable because it's going to bring the knee center more centered. And the way to have an idea where the knee center is, if you draw a line between the distal anterior and the proximal anterior pivot points, and another line between posterior and anterior uh, pivot points, they intersect at a certain point. And that intersection is usually very high and posterior to the actual weight line, which makes it really stable. But as the knee bends, it brings it into the unstable mode real fast. Five bars are usually a design around stability. I'm looking for stability. I'm looking for control. This knee is designed that when they hit heel strike and apply weight, if they get a motion in the knee, that's does two things. One, it's a shock absorber. And two, it's getting the two axes more in line, which makes them more stable. So we have a geometric locking type device on it just by the use of it. Now, some patients need that to be very active. Some patients need that to go right away. And some patients need very little of it because they're putting a tremendous amount of force. It's very adjustable with these two centrodes right here. The key to these is you adjust them together. If you turn one an eighth of an inch turn or eighth quarter an eighth of a turn, turn the other an eighth of a turn. These need to run in parallel. If they don't run in parallel, it literally will bind the knee and it won't function as well and it will wear prematurely. You have this adjustment, you have the pneumatic adjustment, you have an extension assist in the bottom of it adjustment. And you have alignment adjustment on the knee on the top pyramid here. There's a screw that goes through the center of it. Now, a word of warning, before you even assemble it, pull that screw out, put Loctite on it. Once you have this in position and you marked where your position is, I recommend you pull it out, put some fresh Loctite on it. And on the very top, I'll show you on another knee, there's a small little screw. And that is to lock it in. Some patients have the ability in torque that they can torque this thing loose. So you need to hit that set screw. This little pyramid, which also can be done with a, a Lotus device on this knee, which is for a lower profile knee dissertic and units like that, has slide and rotation. Okay. We use the same top on quite a few different knees for your convenience so that you can only have one lotus lo adapter sitting there waiting for the next knee or one pyramid whichever you want very simple knee to set up very dynamic knee because depending on how you angle the knee is how much stability you have according to what your patient's going to do with it what is their activity level um, you'll find that the 1323 is a very durable and robust knee now that being said if it is full of dirt, it's going to wear out prematurely. If your patient's using it in a harsh environment, they need to clean it and take care of it. Part of that also goes along with salt water. If you're in a salt water environment, you do not take this in the ocean. And you have to clean it periodically with fresh water to get that abrasive uh, action away from it so it doesn't have any corrosion. And basically, that's the simplicity form how to use this knee.